As Mike Tyson once said, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. Let's hope in this race, I'm the one doing the punching. Right. One. Okay, good. Right, we're recording. Today's race. This is my third or fourth. This is my third attempt, I think, at the stage three of the Lap It Up of this Zwift racing series this month in April. And it is Seaside Sprint again. I have lost count as it feels like all I've raced recently is Seaside Sprint on Zwift. This is my third attempt at this course. I have come second in both of the previous two races I have raced on this course. If you haven't done so already, please go and check out those videos. Check them out before watching this one as they will add more context to what is already a rammed packed video full of trials and tribulations. This course is of course part of this month's Zwift racing series and I love it. Seaside Sprint is now officially my new favourite course. I am hyped, hyped for this, as you could probably tell, because I have come second. Yeah, this is the third time I've raced it, because I've come second in the previous two attempts. I know where I'm going wrong. I know what I need to do. There's not a lot different I'm going to do, except I'm going to attack that last climb before the finish line. No more messing about now. Raw power. So really quickly, in my last video, I had our In The Drops podcast producer, Nathan Crake, DS me. And as we went into that last big bump before the finish line, in his words, he told me to go, go, go from there and to not sit down. Instead, I chose to wait for the sprint. It felt too early to go, go, go from there. And all I'd be doing is dragging everyone else with me for them to just pass me 100 meters before the banner. That's always what happens when I go too early. Then after that race and watching back some of the footage from race one and race two, I saw that with the minus 6% decline coming down from the other side of the bump, I had to hold back quite a lot to stop my momentum because I'm still a really heavy rider. I get quite a lot of momentum on the decline. So this carries me through the riders in front of me and it carried me through too early for an all out sprint attack. I didn't want to go too early, choosing to blast through at the last second. And this tactic nearly worked, but the downside to this is that I lose all the lovely momentum I could have had an advantage with. So this time I decided to fully power into the final climb and then try it as best I can to keep on the power all the way to the finish line. I'll tell you now that the climb starts over 800 meters from the banner. That's a long time to hold on to the power for, especially if you've got to climb an 8% hill, in hope that those around me don't have it in them to try and stick with me. But before we get to that point, I have to complete three laps without getting dropped. So let's get into the race. 10 seconds. Oh, hang on, gear. Oh, I've done the gears. Okay, 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 my gears are... My gears are connected. Here we go. I'm not going to show you the race in its entirety. There's a lot that happens and I'm going to focus on the end of the race specifically, showing the best bits from the rest of it. If you'd like to watch the whole race in its full unedited glory, then I've uploaded this one along with most of my other races onto my Patreon page. You have a seven day free trial to see if you like what I'm selling. So I then leave the starting pen with far too much enthusiasm and adrenaline, putting down more power than I probably needed to. All right, let's settle down. The irony is not lost on me, having spent a large portion of the start of my last video talking about people being erratic off the start line. Please don't hold this against me. I'm just hyped to try again for this elusive win. I'm not in the mood to have to fight to get into the lead group, so. Let's make this a faster start to try and drop as many people as possible. However, having said that, I've also been dropped on the first of the upcoming rollers twice before, and I do not intend to allow that to happen again. So I've decided to control this race from the front. Okay, good. Okay, everyone's powering through the pack because they've had to sprint to catch on. That's good. People using their power-ups already. Boy, oh boy. 
My fast start had also caused an early lead pack to form. Other riders having to chase to catch on and people using power-ups within the first few hundred meters. I am very, very happy with this start. <laughs> This is a very risky game I'm playing here, pushing early, hoping to break the lead pack down to as few riders as possible and planning a half sprint, half mini breakaway at the end of this race that I haven't even raced yet is a really, really risky tactic. This really goes to show how far I've come over the last 12 months. Having tactics and plans is only the right of the privileged few who have the energy to have tactics and plans. When you're holding on for dear life for 30 minutes straight, all thoughts of game plans go out the window. From all these legs up. As Mike Tyson once said, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. Let's hope in this race I'm the one doing the punching. Just as we come round this bend, this is this is the climb that I'm going to attack. So when I come up on the last lap for the finish line, I'm going to attack here now and just go. Obviously, faster than this. I've saved the feather for Volcano, I don't need it. I don't need a drafting boost, so I'm just gonna save the feather for the Volcano. We've come down to the uh, there's a bit of a long flat section here, zero, zero percent, so far so good. So there's about, what, 15 of us, someone's been dropped off the back for some reason, they're way off. Yeah, we're just coming up to the volcano climb, first time up it. Then as we approach the volcano climb for the first time in this race, I decide rather than powering up it like I did in the first two races, I would take this one nice and easy and just stick to the back of the pack. Not getting dropped, but not going to the front like I did on my two previous races. I decided to roll into it and put down just enough wattage to stick with the pack and no more. Here comes a turn. Here comes the pain, baby. And now. Take it easy. There's someone going for it. Then two riders decide to attack the climb, making me react as it looks like a breakaway attempt and I am at my weakest on a climb. I can't allow that. Why are they sprinting? I managed to catch back on, but it showed me two things. First was that these two riders were not averse to attacking climbs. <sighs> Heart rate's a little high now. And the second was that they do not have the one minute power to make that attack stick. They showed me their hand early doors on lap one. This gave me a boost in confidence and I decided later on in the race to test them next time around on this course. Okay, we're on. Come on guys, let's keep pushing. Now that I caught them, I wanted to make this two second gap that we had now created stick and hope that they would push with me until we were at least out of the volcano. Come on, they're catching us. If we're gonna go for a break, let's do it. However, I wasn't gonna be the one pulling. They started this attack. If they were not gonna pull, then I'm not gonna do the work for them. Come on, I'm hoping they're gonna come with me. He's put his draft on. Yeah, they've caught back on. They didn't want to... These guys didn't want to push. Okay, the chasing group have caught us. Uh, which is fine. Interesting though. There's not many powerful climbers, but 
We need to keep an eye on those two at the front. I don't want to let their weight is. No one really pushes this climb, which I'm pleased with. Bloody attacking climbs and then not doing anything with it is really annoying. Another drafting boot. So if I get a feather at any point on this course, I'm gonna keep it for that last climb. Okay, this is where I'm gonna use my power up. I'm gonna save it. So hopefully it overlaps the bottom of the climb. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if the two that pushed the climb uh, last time, it'll be interesting to see if they push it again this time. Because if they push it again this time, they're going to do it on the final, on the final lap. Uh, drafting boost is done. Now we've got the turn. It'll be interesting to see what they do here. Yeah, you can see his numbers, look. I'm not getting dropped this time. And then again, a few riders, two being the usual suspects, attack the climb again. This time I was expecting it and I stayed close behind them. No way. Not expending too much energy, just enough to stay with them. And then they all immediately came off the gas as I shot to the front. I was expecting a few of them to try and make the attack stick, not stop and drop gears when they entered the volcano. This was really annoying. Oh, I've gone to the front. I don't understand why riders attack like this and then don't try and make the most of it. At least get to the banner or the other side of the volcano. No one is being dropped if we all stop here. This guy's worried I'm about to do a break. It's okay, relax guys. I've just over-egged the climb. Just let my weight fall on the pedals. Okay, I have a feather. I'm not gonna risk losing it, so I'm gonna keep it for the final climb. That was the plan because I think the last race or the one before, I can't remember, I went the entire race without a feather once. So I just don't want to risk it. We then made it through to the flat section and over the rollers. Nothing much happened, no attacks and no one is pushing. I was feeling really good and knowing from watching them attack the volcano, I really didn't want one of these other riders beating me to the banner in a sprint. So because I was feeling really good and because I needed to know how strong these riders were, I decided to push this last bump before the banner on lap two with a whole lap left to go. You want to attack the volcano? I'll attack the climb with a minus 6% descent on the other side. Let's see who wants to play. Let's see if any of them want to play. Now we had gone from a nine strong lead pack down to just five. However, I did notice a rider, one of the riders that attacked the volcano on that one, had been dropped and he was working really hard to try and bridge the gap. I really didn't want to allow this. However, the riders around me didn't want to help me to make this lead stick. Come on guys, let's, let's drop them. Here we go. And they're dropped. Come on. It just takes one person. Then on the descent, I keep pushing and manage to drop another on the descent from this lead group, taking us down to four. However, that newly dropped rider works really hard to get back onto the pack in the flats. Luckily, the other chasing riders further back don't have any more to give and stop trying to bridge. Come on, guys. Paul, come on. 
They're catching. That's better. Look, there's a guy chasing us. So he's gonna be spent. I need my heart rate to come down. There's five of us. This race in the final lap has come down to a five-way shootout. So at least I've got top five. As we attack the volcano for the last time. Okay, here we go. The climb. I feel so good right now. I've controlled this race from beginning to end. I love this course and I know that if I get to the top of this volcano with the other riders, I am 100% winning this race. Anyone doing city walks? Yeah. Ah. As we get to the top of the volcano, I then decide to keep the pressure on. However, my bike loses connection and my gear gets stuck in gear 18. My gears are stuck. Oh. Okay, my gears are stuck in 18. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. Bloody hell. Thank God for that. If my gears didn't react soon and I had to watch these riders slowly sail past me, then this bike and my computer would have had a trip straight out the window. Then I noticed, unfortunately for Mosby, who had made such a good effort to catch back on on the flats, had now been dropped on the volcano climb. Oh, it's bloody climbing. Looks like there's four of us. We must have, yeah, we've dropped the guy behind. Ah, that's good. So with this new victim and me almost succumbing to technical glitches, it had now come down to a four-way shootout. There were four of us, I know, that were gonna go in to that final chase. So because of that push after the last climb, I uh, forced everyone else to be dropped. So we've got four of us in the lead pack now. So hopefully these guys have spent I'm being dropped. Hopefully these guys have spent their energy. This is now as much about nerve as it is about endurance and raw watts. I can tell you, now that we're up the volcano, I am ready to go. As we come out of this tunnel, it's the start of the rollers. And uh, they all seem to hit them quite hard. As I say that, I start to get dropped. They have found some extra watts and are pushing hard. They think they can win this and are 100% thinking about their sprint finish. I need to get that pace up. I am not gonna allow them to sprint. I'm gonna make them go 800 meters out on an 8% climb or hand me the win. I am ruining their plans. I am gonna fully punch them in the face. We're gonna attack, remember? I'm not going for an out and out sprint like I did before. Right, I'm going radio silence because I need my breath. I am 100% ready for this. I start to build the momentum up as I leave the final roller, boosting me into that last climb. Okay, we're coming up to it. I deploy my feather and I keep my watts high, but as sustainable as possible. I also stay on the watts over the top until I descend. I then use the descent for a micro rest as I don't lose speed here and yeah. then I fully go for it. If everything goes to plan, then this will catch them off guard and it will get me enough distance to stop them having me as a draft benefit in their own sprints. I am also hoping them having to chase me up at 8% climb ruins their plans of an out and out sprint finish. So for the third time this week and 64th time in 12 months, let's do this. I didn't swear because my daughter's told me off for of swearing too much in recent videos, I'm very sorry. <laughs> Here we go, baby.
Dante. Cheating. Oh. Now I know I'm a Zwifter. I have nothing more to add. I can retire from Zwift in peace, knowing that I have overcome this really hard challenge. I don't have a mic to drop. I turned his fan off. Jesus, I did it. <laughs> oh man, I've got sweat pouring off me. You have no idea how good that feels. <sighs> Thank you for watching this video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. It means a lot that you guys support me. I bloody did it. Cat D win.